Hi! In this video I am going to show you how I make these mock cable socks. There is no actual cable knitting process involved in these so um, even though the pattern may look a little magical I can promise you there is no need for a Hogwarts education to be able to make these. And uh, I am going to show you the whole process step by step from cuff to heel and toe. And um, a little note before we begin. I start the rib here with knit 2, purl 2 and that is the way it should be done but uh, in the written pattern I have written that you start with a purl 1 and then you knit 2, purl 2 and that is to make the pattern symmetrical on top of the foot here one purl stitch there and one purl stitch there. In the video I have forgotten about this and I have solved it by just not knitting the last stitch on the round here. Uh, but So whether you just knit two purl two like in the video or you Remember to purl one stitch in the beginning as in the written pattern. It doesn't matter. You can fix it here when the heel starts. And no matter what you choose, the sock will look the same. And um, there will be a link to free pattern in three sizes in the video description down there. And there will also be something you can click on, I think, in this corner where you get to the free pattern and you may probably also find information about my other patterns there and other videos. So that's it and I think we should get started. I am ready with my yarn and five double pointed needles and I will begin to cast on. Uh, you use the method to cast on that you prefer. The one I am going to show you now is the one I like to use when I want a rib with a very elastic edge. And I start by making a slip knot like this and I place place it onto one of my needles and I gently pull just to make the first stitch here sit close on the needle but without being too tight. The yarn end I hide it away here and I hold my working yarn between my middle finger and my thumb then I use my index finger and I move from underneath the yarn and up and I twist to make this loop around my finger. My knitting needle I place on top of the yarn and move down to the tip of my finger and I slip the loop onto the needle and gently tighten just to place this second stitch close to the first but without being too tight. And for the next stitch I do the same Hold my yarn between my middle finger and thumb, index finger from down and up, twist to make the loop, needle on top of the yarn, move down to the tip of my index finger and slip the loop onto the needle. And now I simply continue until I have the number of stitches that I want on my needle. Let's count. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 15. 
like this and then I find my second needle and I place it underneath the first like this and I hold them crossed like this and I continue to cast on the same way. The first stitch on my new needle here I make sure it is placed as close as possible to the last stitch on this needle and I continue same way and when I have all my stitches evenly distributed on four needles I will get back to you and show you how I continue my cast on is finished and I have organized my needles so that the first and last needle on my round are placed on top of the two others. I think it is the easiest way to work with these double pointed needles. And then I begin, just loosen the slip knot a little bit and I knit the first stitch. I make sure the first stitch is placed close to the last stitch cast on here. And I am going to make a knit to purl to rib. So I have knit two and now I purl two. And when I cast on the way I do, the first round will be a little slow because each stitch cast on is really just a loop on the needle. You can see here that I can pull it and make it bigger and I can also pull on this thread between the needles and make it tighter. And then I will also make a big gap here. So there will be a little gap following around on the first round. It will go away in the second round. But to avoid this gap getting too big, I make sure that even though I place each stitch close to the last one, I try not to pull this thread between the needles. So this will make the first round a little slow but it is also what makes the cast on edge so elastic and in my view also pretty. So I will continue throughout this needle and when I am going to continue with the next needle I just continue to keep in mind that the first stitch I knit on this needle is placed close to the last stitch on the last needle and after that avoid pulling this thread and now I am going to continue to do my knit to purl to rib round and around until my cuff has the length that I am looking for and when it has I will get back to you and show you how I make the ankle pattern on the sock. Here I have my finished cuff 
with the knit to purl to rib and this is what the edge looks like with the cast on method I used and this is how stretchy it is and I have chosen to change to a different color this is optional you could make the whole sock in one color but I have decided I want a contrast to the rib here when I changed color I have I knitted two rounds in my new color and now I am going to start my pattern for the ankle of the sock and this pattern is a um, mock cable pattern with uh, a little eye or hole in the middle of the pattern it's not really a cable pattern because there is no no um, cabling it's only slip stitches and yarn overs that make the effect so I begin here I have the knit two part of my rib I knit the first stitch and yarn over that I do simply by bringing my needle around the yarn to pick it up like this and then I knit the next stitch just pull this to show you what it looks like now my knit two part of the rib has three stitches and you can see this little hole or eye forming underneath my needle the purl stitches I will continue to purl and when I have the two knit stitches I knit yarn over and knit Pearl, pearl, knit, yarn over, knit. And I will continue this way throughout the round and when I arrive back here I will show you the next round of the pattern. I have finished my round with the yarn overs and the next step is to where I have the two knit stitches and the yarn over I knit one and I knit the yarn over two and I knit three so I have knit three purl Two. and I repeat and knit the two knit stitches and the yarn over and then I continue to purl the purl stitches so I knit one two three and I purl one, two. And when I knit the yarn over, I make sure it opens up like this to make this whole effect that you see here. And when I have finished this round, I continue to make one more round with knit three, purl two. And when I have completed those two rounds, I get back to you and show you the next step. I have finished the two rounds of knit three, purl two, and I'm ready to show you the fourth and last round of the mock cable pattern. 
and in the fourth round it is time to decrease back to two knit stitches as it was before I did my yarn over and what I do is that I when I have the three knit stitches I slip the first stitch and then I knit the two that are left and I pick up the first stitch that was slipped and I bring it over the two others and off the needle and you can see there that I almost tie those two stitches together so this knit two part of the rib is now back to two stitches I continue to purl the purl stitches and here I have three knit stitches again and I slip knit knit pick up the slipped stitch bring it over the two others and off the needle and this continues throughout the whole round and when I am finished I begin over again with the yarn overs and I will quickly get back to show you that but now I have done one whole repetition of the pattern the first round was knit one yarn over knit one and purl two then there was two rounds with knit three purl two and the fourth round the one I am doing now with slip one knit knit and pick up the slip stitch bring it over and off the needle and then purl two and now you can see the pattern taking form now as the first repetition of the pattern is done the four rounds that we have just been through and you are going to start with a new repetition of the pattern it, these are the two knit stitches that we had here on the rib and then you start over again and you knit the first yarn over and knit the second and purl so that's it. The four rounds are continued for as many repetitions that you like so that the ankle of the sock gets the length that you are looking for. And that is what I'm going to do with mine. And when my ankle part is long enough, I will get back to you and show you how I make the heel. Here I have the finished ankle and this is what the pattern looks like with the mock cable and I am ready to start the heel and I have um, prepared by checking that I have half the stitches on these two needles because I'm going to work the heel back and forward over the first two needles on my round. I also wanted to have symmetrical pattern so I have um, adjusted this is actually the last stitch on the round but I have I have not worked it on the last round so I have my working yarn here so I begin with a purl stitch work the pattern and I end with a purl stitch and now I have half the stitches on my round here for the heel and half the stitches here for on over the top of the foot if I had planned better I could have started my rib by uh, instead of knit two, purl two, I could have purl one 
and then knit two, purl two, knit two, purl two. So that would have been a way to solve this, but this works as well. So I will start my heel flap by working my two needles here with knit stitches only. So I am converting all my purl stitches into knit stitches and you may notice that when I when I knit the stitches that are already knit stitches I bring my needle through from from the left like this you can see the stitch opens up but with my purl stitches I bring my needle in from the right and if you this this has to do with the technique I use when I purl so when I convert the purl stitches into knit stitches I just need to check that they open up like this so I don't twist knit them. If you purl differently your purl stitches would sit like this and they open up when you go from left to right. So it is not how you do it, it is the result that you work them like this and not twist it. And when I arrive at the end of my second needle here, I'll be there soon. There. I turn my work to the wrong side. I slip the first stitch and I purl my way back to the beginning of my row. And if I want to make a stocking net heel flap, I will continue to repeat the two rows that I have just shown you. I knit when I am on the right side and I purl when I work from the wrong side like I am doing now. And I continue to do so until the heel flap has the right size. And the right size you either measure, you check um, a size chart, or check with the pattern you are following. And um, uh, I am not going to do a plain stockinette heel flap. I am going to do a slip stitch rib. And uh, I usually start the same way as I have shown you. I do the first two rows the same way for both the slip stitch rib and the plain stockinette heel flap. That's because I don't want to pull the pattern. And when I do the slip stitch rib, uh, from now I continue to do the two rows that I'm going to show you now. I slip the first stitch and then I knit, slip, knit, slip, knit, slip and knit every second stitch 
and I do it the same way on both needles. Let's see if I have gotten it right here. Slip, knit, slip, knit, slip. And I continue on the second needle. And now I have an even number of stitches on my needles so that when I come to the end of my row it fits here. I slip the second to last stitch and I knit the last. If I had an odd number here I would simply have to knit both of the last stitches because then you would have to knit and you can't slip the last stitch because when I turn to the wrong side that is the first thing I do and if you slip the same stitch on each row then you never work it and it will only be one loop that will become tighter and tighter. So that is why I knit knit the two last stitches if I have an odd number of stitches on my heel flap and I do the slip stitch rib. And when I do the second row I purl all the way back to the beginning the same way as if I were doing the stockinette heel flap. And I repeat these two rounds until I have the right measure on my heel flap. And uh, I will come back to you and show you the next step. Here I have the finished heel flap. You can see the pattern from my slip stitch rib. And the next step is to turn the heel where I do decreases and shape the heel. I have already started by working this needle in uh, knit stitches only because this was where I finished the heel flap so I have done these stitches. I have made sure I have distributed my stitches so that I have the same number on each needle and here I knit four stitches. The number of stitches that you work on the on the second half of the knee heel flap. This uh, will be written in the pattern that you are following because this number can vary uh, with size and yarn and, and things like this. And uh, But after I have done these stitches, the next two stitches I knit together. And because I purl the way I do, my stitches sit like this on my needle when, so that when I stick my needle through from right and towards left, they open up like this. So in this case, I simply stick my needle through the two next stitches from right to left and I knit them together. If the, need, the stitches were placed the opposite direction on my needle and it is likely that they are if you purl differently than I do, then if you put your needle through from right to left you would twist the stitches. 
So if that is the case, you slip and slip and then stick the left needle through from left to right and knit the stitches together. And I knit one more before I turn to the wrong side. And I slip the first stitch and I purl my way back. And then I purl four stitches on this needle. And then I purl two together. And again I check that when I pick up the stitch it opens up like this and it does not twist like it does here. I don't want the triangle. I want the square. So I pick up two stitches and I purl them together. And then I purl one more and I turn to the right side again and slip the first stitch and I knit my way back to the middle again. And now I have two gaps here. And now that when I continue, I do the same operation with knitting the stitches together on this side and purling them together on this side. Only now I, I don't have to count stitches anymore. Every time I work two stitches together, I also work this gap together. So I, I take the stitch before the gap and the stitch after the gap. And I work them together. And then one more. I turn. And then I do the same from the wrong side, where I purl until I have one stitch left before the gap. I pick up the stitch before and the stitch after the gap and I purl them together. Purl one more. Turn my work again. And repeat. And I repeat this until I have worked all my gaps together. They will move further and further to the side and when they are both completely gone then my heel turn is finished and I will get back to show you the next step. And here my heel turn is finished. This is what it looks like. And um, I finished it here on this side. This was where I closed the last gap. And uh, now I am ready to pick up the stitches along the side of the heel flap. So I can connect the heel with the rest of the sock. And I have started by 
knitting across these two needles so that next step is to start picking up stitches and I'm going to pick up one stitch for each of the stitches along the edge and these are the stitches that was slipped at the beginning of the row so there is one stitch for every two rows here and uh, there are many ways to pick up these stitches this is how I like to do it I um, I try to do it from the wrong side and when I When I pick the stitches up, I try to I try to see if I can I'll just pick up a few a few first and then I'll show you. Here that to make sure I pick up the right thread of yarn when I pull it you can see I tighten the stitch the edge stitch here the same here so when pulling here tightens this stitch here on the on the edge then I am on the right path so I pick up one for each stitch along the edge here and then I count them Fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, and I have a little space left here, so I will pick up one more nineteen. And the reason I count is because I want to pick up the same number of stitches here in the other side, and now I can knit the stitches I picked up over onto this needle so that I have this half of the heel and this side together. So I just knit these 19 stitches. It doesn't have to be 19, can be fewer, can be more. This can depend on the shape of your foot, what you prefer, and of course how many rows you made on the heel flap. Now that I have finished all 19 stitches, it looks like this. And in addition to this, I will pick up one stitch here in the join between the heel and the rest of the foot. And uh, this is to tighten this thread a little and I twist this stitch to make it a little tighter it's to avoid holes in the join between these two needles 
Now I continue the pattern with the mock cables. And I will get back to you when I arrive here. Now I have worked these two needles and I have this side of the heel flap left. So when I pick up stitches on this side, I use this needle because I need this one to work the stitches with later. And I pick up 19 stitches here as left as well. One, two, three. As you can see I can pull the stitch on the edge so that I know that I'm picking up the right thread. Four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18, 19. And then there is this uh, the extra stitch in the join between these two needles pick it up and I twist knit this one and I try to keep my yarn a little tight now so that I don't leave any extra yarn here to create holes and when I start working the picked up stitches along the side here for the first couple of stitches I also tighten it a little and this is only for now when I start making the foot here just because there can easily be holes here. And then I simply work these stitches the same way as on the other side. sure I pick up all the yarn and then finally the heel this half of the heel stitches And now it looks like this and the next step is to start decreasing in the side here. One decrease here and one decrease here. And this is done in every second round. So I will do the first round right away. And I will begin by working these heel stitches and the stitches 
along the side of the heel flap. And I will stop when I have two stitches left on the side of the heel flap. Like this. And I will knit these two stitches together. Just pick up both stitches and knit them together. And now I will work the mock cable pattern and get back to you when I arrive here. And I have done the cable pattern and I'm ready to do the second decrease. And on this side, where I'm about to begin the stitches on the side of the heel flap, I decrease the two first stitches. And in this side, I slip, slip, and then knit the two stitches together like this. And then I continue to knit to finish the round. And now I will continue to decrease in every second round and I will do this until, let me just finish these stitches so I can put down my sock and show you. I will continue to decrease in the sides here until these two needles have the same number of stitches as these two. These are for the top of the foot and these are under the foot on the sole. And for this pattern they should end up having the same number of stitches as here. And sometimes there can be a little variation to that but this will also be mentioned in the pattern that you are following. So I'm going to continue to decrease in every second round and when I have the same number of stitches on the top and under the foot, I'm going to continue to work the foot until it has the right length for me and I will get back to you when it is time to make the toe. And this is what my sock looks like after I have worked the foot until it has the length that I need. So the foot is finished and I am ready to make the toe. I have started by finishing the mock cable pattern with the round that reduces three knit stitches to two so that I am left with the knit to purl to rib. And after that I have worked one round in stockinette. As I want to use a contrast color for the toe I have also changed my yarn color but the things to remember here is to end the mock cable pattern when you have the knit to purl to rib and then work one round in stockinette. I am going to do a wedge toe for these socks 
and uh, first I have distributed my stitches so that we have the same number of stitches under the foot and over. And then I begin with needle one and then I do the first decrease here. I knit one. This is loose because it's just been attached here. Knit one and then I slip, slip and knit the two together. This is the first decrease. And then I work my way across needle one and two. And I will get back to you when I have three stitches left on needle two. And now I have worked the rest of needle one and I have done most of needle two. I have three stitches left. And when I do the decrease in this side, I work until I have three stitches left and then I knit the, these two stitches together. Like this. And then I knit the last stitch. Now I am on the top of the foot and I will do the same operation here. One decrease in each side. So I have a total of four decreases on this round. I begin by knitting the first stitch. Then I slip, slip and knit the two slip stitches together. That was decrease number three and I work my way over to the other side and get back when I have three stitches left on needle four. Now I have three stitches left on needle four or three stitches left on my round and it is time for my fourth decrease and again on this side when I am at the end of needle four I knit the two stitches together and I knit the last stitch and I'm ready to start a new round and the next round I will knit all stitches no decreasing and then I'll continue to decrease in every second round and each round of decreasing will have four decreases here 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 and here and in each side where I'm holding now there will be two stitches that will be side columns or side bands but this pattern will be more visible after I have done a few rounds so now I will continue to knit and decrease every second round and when I have done a few rounds, I will get back to you and show you the next step. And here I have the toe almost finished. I have decreased in every second round until I got to this point. And to round the toe off, I have started decreasing four stitches in every round in this last part and to finish the toe I have two choices I can find a sewing needle and stitch the tip together 
or I can do what I am going to show you now where I knit all remaining stitches together. And now when that's done I am left with 8 stitches and I will cut my yarn and show you how I finish and close this hole. I have cut my yarn and I'm going to show you how I finish and what I do is that I knit all remaining stitches but when I knit them I pull the yarn end through the stitch like this. And now I will simply continue to show you the whole process. And this is what the finished sock looks like. And uh, the only thing left now is to make one more. Link to free pattern for this sock with three different sizes you will find in the video description under here. And there you will also find links to other patterns that I have made and um, now only thing left is to say thank you so much for watching goodbye